Hello, welcome to GTA Company. Now we are looking into the most interesting topic that is chemical bonding. What is a chemical bond? It is an attraction between atoms that allow the formation of chemical substance that contain two or more atoms. This bond is happened by the electrostatic force of attraction between opposite charges. Either between electrons and nuclei or as a result of dipole attraction. So here is the chemical name and the dot diagram and the chemical structure is defined here. You can see hydrogen which got only one electron and chemical structure is this one. Whereas carbon holds four electrons. Water, it contains HOH. So, hydrogen, oxygen got 6 valence electrons and hydrogen got 1 valence electron. So, this one is oxygen's electron, this one is oxygen's electron, this one is oxygen electron and this one is oxygen's. And hydrogen forms this one and this one and they form the chemical structure as this one. Ethylene. Ethylene got the dot diagram as this one and the chemical structure is this one. And acetylene, you got three bonds here. So water and hydrogen, chemical bonding is shown here. Now we will talk about a valence cell, valence shell electron pair and repulsion theory. So VSEPR, valence shell electronic pair repulsion theory indicates how the chemical bonding and the electron configuration is done and the structure is formed. So, it happens through electrostatic repulsion. You can see the center center element will have a bonded with the side element with the degree of 180 degree. It's linear. The typical example is beryllium fluoride and this one is carbon sulfide with a double bond CS2 and this is hydrogen cyanide with a nitrogen in the triple bond. Now we will talk about the trigonal planar arrangement. So this is how the structure is. So the center element will be connected to three people at a shot with a degree of 120 degree. That is trigonal planar. So the typical example is boron trifluoride BF3 sulfur trioxide. It got double bond and So here we got our center item and which is of almost 3 persons connector. So the degree is 120 degree. And we got some special elements now which enables you your 120 degree in the form of V shape and it's less than 120 degree. So there are some items like ozone O3. The bond angle is approximately of 116.8 degree. Well, now we will talk about a tetrahedral arrangement. So four elements connected, the angle is 109.5 degree. It is tetrahedral arrangement. Now it is the typical example is methane CH4. We got a special feature here once again. It's a V-shaped trigonal pyramidal which is less than 109.5 degree. And it's ammonia NH3. The bond angle is 107.3 degree. 
which have two valence electron in the outer shell. The same thing happened with the four valence electron in the outer shell. Obviously, it's less than 109.5 degree. The typical example is water. The bond angle is 104.5 degree. We'll talk about trigonal bipyramidal arrangements. So the angle is 120 degree and the other one is 90 degree. The typical example is phosphorus or pentafluoride PF5. So this is called axial equatorial and this is called axial equatorial. For a compound. So, this is referred to as axial equatorial. So, the if it's having a valence electron, in that case, you can see the balance. It's 120 degree, and this one is 90 degree. So the sulfur tetrafluoride will have the equatorial equatorial bond is 101.5. So it's a T shape less than 90 degree. So it's 86.2 degree. The example is bromine trifluoride. Now we got more valence electron in that case the linear 180 degree will react in a different manner. The typical example is a triiodide ion. It's of 180 degree bond angle. I will talk about octahedral arrangements. It's octahedral arrangements with a 90 degree among the elements. The typical example is sulfur hexafluoride. The bond angle is 90 degree. 